Welcome, my dear students and YouTube watchers, to Chapter 3's coverage of stoichiometry and chemical equations. In this video, I will teach you an intro to chemical equations. But first, we begin with a hilarious chemistry cat of the day that I've stolen slash borrowed from quickmeme.com. I wanted to invest, so I bought some bonds. Covalent bonds. Ha ha ha! Ha! All right, so after this chapter, not just this video, but all of the videos in this chapter, you will gain the following skills. In other words, after this chapter, you should be able to do each of the following. First, explain the difference between combination, decomposition, combustion, and metathesis reactions. Next, balance chemical equations. Next, calculate formula weights, also called molar masses and percent compositions. Use Avogadro's number to interconvert between moles and number of atoms. Use a compound's molecular weight to interconvert between moles and grams. Calculate the number of molecules and atoms from mass. Calculate a compound's empirical formula from percent mass. Convert an empirical formula to a molecular formula. Use balanced chemical equations to calculate amounts of reactants and products. Calculate the amount of product formed from a limiting reactant and calculate percent yield. So tons of stuff to cover and get to, but first, a quick disclaimer. So chemists do a lot of things. We invent medicines, food flavorings, preservatives, and dyes. Materials used in modern electronics, cars, airplane parts, tank armor, bulletproof vests, disposable diapers, packaging, paints, insecticides, and everything else imaginable. Basically everything that you can touch that did not come directly from nature contains something in it that was invented or developed by a chemist. To gain the ability to actually use chemical reactions to do this kind of stuff then, you have to first learn some very basic but essential things. This chapter begins covering some of these. Now, I promise that even though they may at times feel like activities that are completely pointless, you will eventually see that they are absolutely essential. In other words, as you begin learning these things, they might seem like I'm just making you do lots of menial tasks with no purpose. But, like the 1980s movie The Karate Kid, where Mr. Miyagi taught Daniel Karate by making him do lots of chores, we will begin with lots of seemingly menial tasks that, over time, will become increasingly valuable and useful, and you will see why in time. My invitation to you is to please be patient. With that said, here's a link to a cool clip from that movie. I can't show it here for copyright purposes, but I will include it in the description below, and I strongly recommend that you watch it if you've never seen that movie. It's a great film. All right. So we begin with an intro to chemical equations with a beautiful example. You can take two hydrogen molecules. Now remember, each hydrogen molecule contains two hydrogen atoms within it, represented by these turquoise colored spheres. So again, each hydrogen molecule has a formula of H2 with two hydrogen atoms within it. Okay, so these are two separate molecules, each of which have two hydrogen atoms inside them. We can combine these with one molecule of oxygen whose formula is O2. Each oxygen molecule contains two oxygen atoms. Now, if these all combine and react properly, they will turn into two molecules of water, which each have the formula H2O, each bearing one atom of oxygen and two atoms of turquoise colored hydrogens here per molecule of H2O. If you do all the math here, you'll see that all of the hydrogen atoms over here and all of the oxygen atoms over here end up getting incorporated into our product. So this is a chemical equation that shows all of the molecules and atoms or models of them combining and reconfiguring to form these products, water over here. In chemistry though, we don't typically draw out models like these all the time. We usually write them in a more abbreviated form called a chemical equation. The chemical equation for this would be as follows, 2H2 plus 1O2 turn into 2H2Os. And as it turns out, the arrows right here are red when we read a chemical equation as goes to, yields, or produces. Thus, the correct way to read this would be two hydrogen molecules plus one oxygen molecule yields, goes to, or produces two water molecules. Make sense? Good. I'm going to take this equation and put it right at the top. A couple more details. Everything on the left of this reaction or yields arrow are called reactants. Everything to its right are called products. With that said, let's see if we can determine what each of the numbers here mean. You'll notice that there's a two right here to the left of our H2. What does that mean? Well, if we return to looking at our model of this equation, you'll see that there are two separate hydrogen or H2 molecules. So this big two right here tells us how many total H2 molecules there are. What about the little two right here? Well, that little two indicates that within each H2 molecule, there are two H atoms, okay? Separately, we have one O2 molecule, each of which contains two individual O2 atoms. 
And when we combine them together and everything goes nicely, this produces or yields two H2O molecules, okay? So these larger numbers that are to the left of each of the molecules in the chemical equation are called coefficients, okay? The coefficients tell you how many molecules there are of each type. These lower or smaller numbers are called subscripts. They tell you how many atoms of each element are within each individual molecule. Again, to analyze this more deeply, you can see that each individual hydrogen molecule has two hydrogen atoms within it. In other words, each molecule has a formula of H2. That two, this little subscript, tells us how many H atoms there are per molecule. You'll also see that in the overall process, there are two total molecules. The two total molecules are indicated by this larger two, the coefficient. By extension, each oxygen molecule contains two oxygen atoms, indicated by the subscript two right here, and there's only one oxygen molecule total ratio-wise in this process. That one is indicated by the one that's implied right here. Now, anytime you don't see a number, it's an implied one. So there's an implied one coefficient to the left of this O2 in the formula. When these all combine properly, ratio-wise, they form, produce, or yield two molecules of H2O. Each H2O has two H atoms and one oxygen atom within it, indicated by the two subscript next to the H and the implied one subscript next to the O. And there are two total H2O molecules indicated by the large two coefficient at that location. So again, please make sure you understand the distinction and difference between coefficients and subscripts. Additional details. Oftentimes in chemical equations like this, we also include information about the physical state or states of each reactant and product. We write down the letter G in parentheses to indicate if the substance is a gas, an S in parentheses to indicate if it's a solid, and an L in parentheses to indicate if it's a liquid. Separately, we write down AQ in parentheses to indicate if the substance is aqueous, which means what? It means that that substance is dissolved in water. So if we wanted to rewrite this equation properly, indicating all of those physical states, it would look like this. We have two molecules of hydrogen gas reacting with one molecule of O2 gas. See the little Gs here? And that would yield or produce two molecules of H2O liquid. So this is our chemical equation with reactants and products and all of the physical states listed. Now, sometimes we write additional words or abbreviations over or under the reaction arrow to indicate special conditions, such as catalysts, added heat, which is indicated with a triangle. It's a Greek delta letter, but I sometimes like to call it triangle and electric current and so forth. For instance, you can actually reverse the reaction of H2O. In other words, you can take H2O molecules, apply an electric current and get them to reverse back to hydrogen and oxygen gases. So we might write electric current over the reaction arrow to tell the reader that this reaction requires that extra special kick, that electric current. Alternatively, we could do this reaction, potassium chlorate solid being treated with heat indicated with a triangle to separate out into potassium chloride and oxygen or O2 gas.